My name is Jennifer McNichol and I am a first year teacher at Arbor Creek. I don't teach first grade. I think the things that make people want to be a teacher are to make a difference in the lives of students. She's very excited about it, which is refreshing for all of us veteran teachers to have those new teachers come in and to see that thriving in that, um, in that environment, ready to accept those brand new kids. When I first started teaching, I remember getting my books and my grade book from the principal and going home and looking at all of it and thinking, I don't know where to start. Education is a tough field these days and uh, we have a lot of expectations that are put on us. So we want to have some of those people that are committed to providing kids the best education they can, providing them the best learning opportunities that are available. Jennifer has set out to be a teacher and that's what she was meant to be. A lot of people say your first year is your hardest, and I don't know if it's your hardest, but I know it's difficult. And unfortunately, a few of my friends who are teachers have decided that they don't want to teach anymore after their first year. Teaching is tough, but you know that going into it. It's going to be a tough year for Jennifer. I just keep reminding her that my first year of teaching was an absolute bear for me. He is the PE teacher for middle school and high school. He is also their athletic director and president of the charter school sports association that they belong to. I think some new teachers feel like it's, it's going to be a lot easier than it really is. They, they've seen their teachers teaching and it, it looked so easy for them. I think they expected that they would come in and the children would behave and the children would learn and um, it doesn't always work out so neatly like that. I want people who have lofty goals and who are reaching for the stars. Um, it takes that kind of a person to accomplish what we need to accomplish in education. As your experience as a teacher, is the first year special? It's absolutely special. I think you form relationships with students that are different than the relationships you'll form with any other class. It's kind of your baseline and you begin comparing everything you do with that first year. It's not easy, but it's not impossible and it has to be fun or you're not doing it right. Maybe I shouldn't say that yet. <laughs> so spending a lot of time up front during that first week really uh, communicating to the students in your classroom what are the expectations, how are things going to function in um, the classroom. That's one of the most important things that you can do. This is a very exciting time of year for brand new teachers. First of all, they want to be in their classroom and they want to have it set up and they, they spend so much time doing all these creative things in their classroom, getting ready for students. And bulletin boards sometimes can take care of themselves a little bit later on, but it's certainly not the most important thing that you want to focus on as you're beginning the year. And then, of course, they're torn away from their classroom to attend some meetings. Olathe has meetings for everything, which is great. It keeps you informed, I, I understand, and let you know what's coming up and what changes are coming around and that's what you need to have. But uh, I had no idea there was that many meetings that she'd be involved with. What's with all the meetings that new teachers have to go to? That's a great question and I think that's something that um, I think all teachers in Olathe would like to know with what is with all the meetings. Let's go back to the handbook kind of, the other part here. And I think we're on page five. We always begin the year with bringing the new teachers in a couple of days ahead of the regular teacher's contract. You pull them from the bottom out. So like the top copy is the white copy. Just to provide them with the background knowledge that they're going to need to get their year off to a good start, which includes our new educator induction program, which is a program where teachers can come and learn about the ways that we expect and hope that our teachers in Olathe will teach. And up in there, it tells you the seven basic strands. So we do it this way, and that's what's up with all the meetings. The building opened July 28th, and I've been here every day since then. 
you don't go into teaching to make $100,000 a year. <laughs> you go into teaching because you like doing what you want. Is it common to see a teacher invest some of their own money? Is it common? Yes, it's very common. I think especially at the beginning of the year and especially for new teachers. I think anybody in the field of education would love to be able to provide teachers with anything that they need to be able to create the climate um, for that classroom that they want to have. But reality is we have to put the money where we get the most bang for the buck and that is into those more teaching kinds of materials. And that's not to say that she may not spend some of her own money on teaching materials too, but I think for the most part they put their own money into more of the aesthetics that create that climate that makes it Mrs. McNichol's room and not somebody else's room. I'd rather work and see that it's done the way I want it to. Because it is special. Your first year is, you just got all the energy in the world, so use as much of it as you can. There's one week. Yes. I'm not getting much sleep, having anxiety nightmares. This is the hard part. Making sure everyone can see everywhere they need to. All the boards and the TV screen, and nothing's in the way. It's just little things that you don't think about until it's your first room and it's empty and it has to be filled before the kids come. So. I don't think parents or others know that those people who are dedicated and those people who, who love their profession, uh, the time and energy that they put into making sure that their classroom is just right. It's like one of those brain teasers where everything is fine except for one little piece and then you have to rearrange the whole thing again. It is so fun to see those kids come through the door and, and, and you can say, so-and-so, give me a hug if you had a great summer. And they're excited about being at school. They're excited about meeting their new teachers starting in again. For the record, are you ready for today? As ready can be, as ready as I can. You know, no, <laughs> no, I'm not. Yes, I am. Good morning. Have a good first day. I always have told myself as a young teacher that if it ever came to the point that before the first day of school I could actually sleep the night before, that it might actually be time time to get out. Because I think that bit of anxiety is, is important to have. It, it makes you work harder um, and it also shows that you, you really care and are concerned about what's going to be happening in those first few days of school as you meet those children for the first time. So how much time do you have until the kids come in? Nine minutes. Nine minutes and counting down. Any expectations? It was eight o'clock in the morning and there's already a parent coming in. And the funny thing is, I came in here today. Things are gonna happen at the last minute. Those first few days of school are, are very, very stressful, I think, because parents are bringing you their treasure and they have lots and lots of questions. I'm sure it caused her some, some stress to have that kind of an interruption. The thing that it's doing is really breaking her in because from that moment on, that's going to be a common occurrence throughout the day. I'm just worried I'll forget something. I mean, I should have done this last night, but it was 10.30 and I was tired and I was in tears and I wanted to go home. Okay, guys, they are heading in at this time. Please be ready. just, I don't know, because they're not kindergartners, but they're, they're not what you expect um, yet as a first grader. You know, that very first day, I think, is somewhat overwhelming, and I try to share with teachers that not only will you have all your students coming in, you'll have parents coming in and things to share. We were just trying to get Alex settled in and into class and Mrs. McNichols in there, and so many parents in there, and so many kids. It was hard to let go, but um, it went well. She enjoyed it, and I survived. <laughs> He's our oldest child, and this was the first time he would be in a classroom all day. 
it's the first full day experience for them, and so they're they're feeling a little lonely and knowing that they're not going to have their son or daughter with them. I was emotional, but he was excited about it. What's the worst thing about being a first grader? Um, that kindergartens have three hours of school, and um, first graders have seven hours of school. You're gonna have the best day. Will you listen to Miss Miss Nicole do that in a row. Raise your hand. Okay. And it'll be great. I hate to tell parents this, but yes, those first graders usually jump right in and they're just fine as soon as mom and dad leave. What's your favorite thing about being a first grader? Um, that we get to stay all day. I think some of the, the biggest things that new teachers need to consider are the little things. They think about curriculum, they think about bulletin boards, they think of the big stuff, but they don't think about the small thing. Considering ahead of time, what's the procedure going to be for sharpening a pencil or for getting a drink or for going to the bathroom. I have an electric pencil sharpener. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It does it so fast. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So we need to be frozen like an ice cube. Not talking, not moving. But make sure your eyes have moved to me. Sometimes you, your mind says, man, it'd be nice to have a teacher that's been doing it 20 years or so. But then also your mind thinks of new, uh, younger, uh, maybe more lively, more bring in some new things that they've just learned to the table. I never had any issues. When we come in fresh out of school, we bring great new ideas to our employer, but we all have a learning curve. Eyes on me. <laughs> there you go. Unfortunately, the reality of the job is that within the first day, the first week, it's exhausting for those new teachers and we begin to see that excitement and that motivation turn into just a little bit of anxiety begins to take over and am I going to be able to keep up and it's just kind of working from day to day to day. Eyes on me, frozen like an ice cube one. You know, she's going to finish a lesson at 10.05 and need to be at recess at 10.07 and back in for another lesson and need to be at lunch at 11.02. And, uh, you know, hopefully have time to hit the restroom in there somewhere. So the life of a teacher is very busy. It's constantly going. You can imagine a classroom of 20 kids and trying to meet all those needs. It's um, nonstop from 8 to 4. So zip it. Zip. And lock it. Zip. Zip. It's just, it's different. It's just not what you thought. They're, um, they're a lot of fun. But I haven't sat down yet except for lunch and I've taken away all the heels <laughs> that I was planning on wearing because my feet hurt. My eyes are looking straight ahead. I'm ready for the haul. And I, my lesson plan book is up and running, so it makes me feel more comfortable, which makes the kids feel more comfortable. What good listeners. To see how structured all of her lessons were, I was just, I, I smiled the first time I saw them. I was like, all right, if you can do that every single day, awesome. Right now, special assemblies, special things we do are great. It's a really, you're like, mm, I get to sit down <laughs> and, and let someone else entertain them for a while and keep their attention. But at the same time, oh my gosh, I lost my 40 minutes of shared reading that I had to have. Set up, sweetie. We're almost done. You guys have done a good job. Keep it up. The time and energy that sometimes it takes to be successful, especially this first year, she doesn't have a lot of files and things she can draw upon and draw from. And so she's gonna be spending some nights here where she's working on the uh, folders that she'll be able to use year after year. But for this first year, she's having to put it all in place and get them all looking the way she wants. When we get to the classroom, because Ms. Weibel can't close her door. Okay, Ben, stay in our second square, all right? Where should your hands be, sir? Thank you. As soon as I get home, I eat. It's usually about nine. Austin, you're doing a fabulous job. I and uh, then I go to sleep. Yes, now that Jennifer is working in Olathe and being there full time, I find myself having to do dishes and do the laundry and straighten up house. Try to help out and do everything else around the house now because she has no other time. Hopefully it's just a first month thing. <laughs> I really don't want to be here until 9 o'clock in December. And I don't think I will be because <laughs> I'm tired. I don't want to stay here till 9 o'clock every night. When I first met Jennifer, I noticed that she was very eager to get started. She wasn't afraid at all. 
and I just noticed a maturity in her thinking and just a love for children. And she really stepped into the student teaching role as if it was her class and she was teaching. But yet, she would ask for advice and say, am I doing okay? But I did see great things as she was teaching and felt very confident that she would have a job at some school. You know, I just didn't know it would be next door to me. In some small way, a part of me is over in that classroom. And that's a good feeling to have. We have some support in place where instructional resource teachers who support our new educators will actually go into their classrooms and do various things. Basically they're the best of the best. Olathe has asked to help teach new teachers and experienced teachers new things. They might model a lesson that is modeling a strategy that we're hoping that they will be able to incorporate themselves. Um, they might sit down with a new teacher and help them make lesson plans and include that strategy or they may go in and observe that new teacher to see if they are utilizing the strategy the way that we would hope that they would use it. Four, five, six, seven. It equals seven, and it could be, and it is my problem. Steven, good job. We help them throughout the year, specifically at the beginning of the year, to get the ball rolling, and then many times throughout the year we'll meet with them. 97, These are first graders in their first month of yeah. school. That was the thing that I loved about student teaching was that people were constantly observing you and always giving you constructive criticism. Just a little suggestion is to give the kids a little bit of think time in there. Okay. okay. So when Sandy comes in and you know tells me which standards I'm meeting and you know what would be some you know a few good ideas to try it a little differently, it's welcomed, always welcomed. You did a good job with what they call with itness. Mm -hmm. When things like that happen, or you're distracted here or there, which happens not only daily, hourly, mm -hmm. almost by the minute, um, you need to have that with itness to keep the class moving. I mean, you're just setting the stage for years to come. If teachers in that first year set up strong management and strong lessons, know how to put together a strong lesson that meets their curriculum, that carries through for years. And I think that first year is very imperative to help them with as many things as they can so that, you know, they don't fall into bad habits. I've been sick for a week. I did everything I could. I was bringing Sprite and I was bringing crackers and tomato soup and extra blankets. My husband's been cooking, you know, since August anyway every night and doing the laundry and helping out as much as he can. That's fine. It's my job. Help her out when she doesn't feel well. I'm picky and I'm a perfectionist, so you know, he is trying to make me <laughs> as happy as he can, but I was sick and I was tired. After a couple of days, she started getting kind of snappy. And I had just whined one too many times, and he just came in and turned off the light and said, you need to go to bed, and <laughs> I'll see you in the morning. Walked, Walked back out of the bedroom. I've never done that before. You give and take, because wait till basketball season rolls around <laughs> for his school, and I'll be the one, you know, rushing home with work to get it done and get dinner ready. I'm sitting here so you guys can sit in the big chairs. Through the conference she hit both the reading and explained where the level Kylie was at and where she wanted to be at. And she also touched on, I believe, the math and where um, Kylie was at at that yes. point and job. kind of where she wanted to be She'll at the there. end of She'll the year. She wants to work hard. I mean, she, she really wants She wants to be she where training. other kids in the class are at, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're only going to be a first grader once. Let's, let's have some fun. I'm telling these people that their students are either doing great or, you know, there's, but there's always something we can focus on. And, and I'm thinking, they're going to think this 23-year-old <laughs> girl is just crazy. He's doing well with his odds or evens, greater than or less than. I'd okay. like him to be at a 20 by the end of the year, very attainable for him. Okay. Parents come to you looking for ideas, no matter if you've been in the classroom one year or 15 years. They want to know what to do with their, with their children, and they look at you as an expert. Um, could we have those on, you know, you send home Friday folders, right? Mm -hmm. And she's had four years of school, and she's student taught, so she had some great ideas to share with her parents. So even though she's young, and new, I still think parents really value her input. He said they're all friends too. They are all friends. This is they just an love each amazing other. class. 
going into a, a young physician or something like that. As, as an older person, you might at first feel a little bit uncomfortable because this person seems so very young, but very quickly in, in talking with them, you realize that they have incredible experience and not only is that experience incredible it's the most up-to-date. I think I've gotten them to think of me more as a teacher, their classroom teacher than oh that's the first year teacher. But yeah at first the thought of I'm 23 years old and I'm telling this you know 30-something mom or dad how to <laughs> work with their kids at home. Yeah sometimes you think that way. <laughs> the thing I don't like about these are sitting in these chairs that I know. I'm... Hey little red so sweet so good you sure can shake that riding hood. Come on, little red, won't you dance with me at the hip hop Halloween ball? At Arbor Creek, Halloween is a big holiday. Shake, shake, shake the bun down. Shake, shake, shake the bun down. Shake, shake, shake the bun at the hip hop Halloween ball. Scooby dooby doo wah, dooby doo. Out of all the party days we have at school, that one is, of course, yeah. the most exciting for the students. Mrs. McNichols, class, slow down. I don't know at this age if they're really thinking about changing issues, but we decided that maybe it would be a good idea for one of us to take the boys to change and one of us to take the girls. Okay, is that everybody? She ended up with the girls and I ended up with the boys. Some of those costumes were just, you know, it was a complete transformation. There were little high heels all over the place and some had makeup that they wanted to try and put on with it. And so getting ready was the most stressful part, I think, of the whole Halloween celebration, but they all had a blast. The best part was that we got a lot of candy. We get to see each other's costumes. They do a wonderful job because they have no inhibitions whatsoever. And so they will just go up there and they will belt out that tune and you can hear them all the way across the school. It just cracks me up. I just think it's the most adorable thing in the world. It was an eye-opener, for sure. So the way she handles the, handled the kids up on the stage just from behind. Someone was kind of messing around or dancing around. She was able to, I could see her just kind of saying her, their name from behind and kids would stop and get back on task. The kids get so excited and they work so hard. Let's take a ride on a magic carpet. But there's something that happens when the parents get out there with video cameras and the kids aren't always used to that and then they're dressed up anyway and it's seven o'clock at night. news is that on Friday Dan and I found out we're gonna have a baby. Yes we did. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> so how are you feeling about that both of you? Good. We're excited. Good. We really okay. are. And we know it's due sometime in the summer so that's good. Thank gosh because I don't know what we would have done if it had been There's no way during the school, this year, school year we could have handled it. Uh -uh. <laughs> well so it's a little early at this point are you um, deciding to kind of keep it to yourselves for a while? Mm -hmm. Gonna keep it quiet, quiet until the first 
two visits? Yeah, probably at least two visits. It's making me still want to work really hard so that next year will be a lot easier. If I can get a lot of things done the way I want them now and um, make it so that they're good enough to use next year, then I won't have to put in as much time hopefully next year and I'll get to go home and be with the baby and you a little bit more than I do now. That'd be nice. You well, said we never saw each other and somehow we, we saw each other enough <laughs> to do this. Today is the day before Thanksgiving break and um, Mrs. Graham's class and my class got together. We made cornbread and she and her class made soup. Do you want some cornbread? And talk about symbolically how the pilgrims and the Native Americans brought their food together. But it was more or less to get some energy out. Please let the teachers do the walking around, okay? I'm due July 10th, so I'll be able to end this year. I might be able to start next year, we'll just have to see how it goes. But So we're very excited, but I'm very exhausted. <laughs> Keeping things quiet for a while. Um, just because of, you know, parent questions and then first grade questions, which I'm not quite sure how to answer yet because who knows what they really, <laughs> what they really know. And then also just um, for myself, that superstition of waiting till three months and, and that sort of thing. So, yes. but we're excited. We're very excited. I was work at, at work at my uh, part-time job that I was working during part of the year. She walked in with a because I forgot she had a doctor's appointment during the day. She walked in with a balloon that said baby on it and a book that said, you're my daddy or something like that and walked in and I just remember jumping the counter and running out and giving her a big hug. Before I jumped, I was like, oh. I had to hold my breath and think about it. I was like, oh my. I think it scared him a lot. Yes, absolutely. Dan, has very high goals he wants to have for his family and so for him you know the thought of of a job that pays very well is always in the back of his mind I think someone said once they wanted to be a teacher and their father said why don't you want to be a doctor or a lawyer and we well, wouldn't have doctors or lawyers without you know teachers they might not be there without their teachers even their first grade teachers or their middle school PE teachers. I have an aunt-in-law who lives in Alaska and is a teacher there. I could email her this weekend and see if she can get us any information about the author. I know I'm not as pleasant as I used to be, but when you get a little stressed out when you're taking on new things and you want to do a good job, then you're going to be focused more. I think second grade does that. Because you can't be, you know, your cheery, positive self all the day when you feel like you need to go to the bathroom and be sick. These are poems that Robbie brought home last year, but they're kind of Christmas carols. I've been talking about it in terms of a roller coaster. Is that accurate? It's, it's very accurate, and it starts out with a real high, and by December, they're kind of at the low point of that roller coaster, but in December, after that Christmas break, they begin to kind of rise and go back up, and at the end of the year, they're actually anticipating and looking forward to another school year. Is teacher burnout a concern? Oh, I think teacher burnout a, is a big concern. Um, and it, it's a big concern for even for new educators, and that's something that when we head into those November, December, January months where those new teachers are kind of at the bottom of the, the roller coaster, we really try and do things that are going to help to kind of lighten their load um, and ease their concerns and worries and burdens so that, um, so that they're not burning out in that first year. Okay, we are done with our crowns, so make sure they're back in your desk, hidden safely away. During classroom observations, it's, it's a time when I can go in and try to reinforce some of the things that I've seen that Jennifer is doing good as a hope to have her, by reinforcing it, continue to do those things. And then it's also another set of eyes to help her to see things that maybe we could do to help her, her day go a little easier and to help her improve and, and be a little bit better at a first grade teacher. What if we wore the blue hat with a capital B and we wore green mittens?
of the other first grade teachers is due December 29th and her kids, just a few of them realized this week <laughs> that she was pregnant and she is very pregnant. And so first graders, you know, they tend to take it in when they choose to. <laughs> There's six of us right now and um, then just last year there were um, two teachers who had a baby. So in, you know, less than two years since the school's been going, there have been eight pregnancies here at Arbor Creek. There is a joke going around that the water is extremely fertile. <laughs> Oh, I am just ready for 3.30 to hit and to be out the door. The first week will be in getting the holidays, you know, taken care of because I put that off. Um, but after that, that next week is just nothing but relaxing and I'll probably just stay in my pajamas the whole day and just do a little bit of work and take it easy. How was your break? It was okay. Um, didn't get as much done as I wanted to because I was really sick with morning sickness um, and I was so thankful for the two weeks off because I don't know if I would have made it to school because I was really I mean every couple hours getting sick and um, so I was thankful for the two weeks. Can I do that on my final copy? Okay and we made very weird noises here's where I want to put he was so scared. He was so scared, comma, lowercase h. He screamed like a girl. <laughs> she was going real strong in October and a little disheartened over the, the holiday time. And again, you know, everybody's kind of shut in. So when you're shut in with all those students, that makes it a little bit more difficult. I think she had some time over break to, to prepare some more curriculum things. She kind of looked at what she had taught, what needed revisited in her students that they hadn't really mastered and made a plan for the rest of the semester. If you finish drafting and revising and I'm alone, you can come see me. You know, the kids came back and they were, they had their energy back and they were just unbelievably excited to see their friends again. and. To some of them, it was a shock that they were still in first grade. A lot of them thought they were going to second grade. I've seen the things I've done that have been helpful to the kids, and I've seen where I need to um, go back and reteach or where I can teach from as a teacher. So my attitude is definitely more focused and more energized. Sloppy copies, scratch it out. We have really just started doing this formally within the last two weeks. So right now, I'm more of, I'll say, slave driver than facilitator. Tyler, how's it coming? They need to be doing what they're supposed to do at that time by themselves before I can become the facilitator. So at first I have to teach them how to do it on their own without talking and let them know that not every word has to be spelled right in the first sloppy copy. Oh, cool. All right, let's start at the beginning. Okay. Pregnancy's going very well. Um, the kids now know because I have one student. I have a lot of kids who like to give me hugs, but I have one who when he comes up, he loves to give bear hugs and he he hits me right at my stomach now because he's tall and he gave me a hug and it just was so tight I, I just slipped and I said oh you're hurting the baby and so then you know half the class stopped and was like what and so I I did a quick little mini lesson of what you were thankful for over the break and I told them that Mr. McNichol and I you know are going to have a baby and I said we found out over break which was just a segue into it but um so the kids now know, and they're so excited. And some of them got it, and some of them were just like, I don't know what that means. And I didn't want to go into it. So. Yeah, when, when she told the class, Audrey came home, she's like, oh, Mrs. McNichols going to have a baby. <laughs> so, of course, she doesn't really understand that concept probably yet. But hasn't really asked about it, which yeah. is the day I'm going to be busy, and you're going to have to talk to her, I think. So. What do you think she should name her baby? Joshy. Um, maybe Trixie. Did Jennifer's pregnancy come as a surprise to you? It, it did come as a surprise to me just because the first year of teaching is so overwhelming and so such a busy time. I was surprised that, that she wanted to add that element in there. She's just a go-getter and she just is determined that she's going to do well. And so um, she knows that she needs extra sleep and I think she's, she's mapped it all out very well 
you are so excited for those teachers and the joy that they're going to have and in this new little bundle of joy that's coming into their life. Um, does it make a little extra work? Absolutely. It makes a little extra work for that teacher too because she knows there's things that she's going to want to accomplish prior to that uh, long-term sub coming into place. Um, and then it's, there's some um, pressure on me to make sure that I get a good long-term sub in there who will continue and stay the course of what has been started during the year. Good. Okay, who has an idea? As a parent, you know that um, this becomes really the focal point of, of your world as you start thinking about having this baby and being this baby's parent. But I think the other really neat thing that it does is it causes you to look at your profession differently. Um, and that's something that I've always tried to, when I'm working with other people's children as a teacher, to think, if this were my child, how would I want this to be done? And I've always thought that way, but it wasn't until I actually became a parent myself that I thought, think I could really understand that. What about saying friends also, like, like best friends or friends, would that work? Could you say that sign language, yes or no? Instead of just friend, could you say friends? Do you expect Jennifer to come back next year? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Jennifer has what it takes to be a very, very good teacher. And, um, you know, I do see her coming back. I see her as being a, a person who has a strong commitment, but also just enjoys her job. She has indicated that she will return to school, that it's very hard to leave those little bundles when, you know, when you've spent, had that quality time with them. And um, so I think that's always a consideration that, um, that moms will not return after their maternity leave. That's the easy part. Okay, the next part of our project requires super good listeners. There are certain kids who art is definitely their thing. You can already tell in first grade, and so you want to be sure and nurture that as well as, you know, keeping them up and going on the reading. You want to, if that's their passion, you want to nurture that too. You're going to decorate your heart with. You shouldn't have scissors in I'm your hand. I'm a pretty good artist. It was like a Valentine's thing to hold candy in. Um, it, it was a red heart and a blue basket thingy, and I made um, flowers on it. I made green, green balls. I haven't said go yet. Oh dear, I'm gonna ask for your hands to be up in the air in about two seconds. Practice writing your name so that it's nice and big because you want people to read it. You know, there's lots of ways to tie in art to different curriculum activities. They love it, and it is ironically the quietest time, but at the same time, it's great for development. See how much you can get done, and I can give you some extra time before music. Does that make sense? Yes. Sign language yeses or noes. Does that make sense? Good. She says she doesn't enjoy being a coach's wife at all because I'm gone so much. But when I have stuff going on like that, she loves to come in and help and do her thing else. It's an extremely busy time of year for him. Basketball season has been really time consuming and busy. And he also works a second part-time job. So if it's not basketball, then it's his job. She knows that's you know, one of the things that I do. And I know that's the same way with her. Camera, run the play. Set up, set up, up. I don't know. Yeah, that's my husband out there yelling and screaming on the sideline, smiling about it. What's your most favorite thing about Mrs. McNichol? Uh, she helps us, and she helps us read, and go to our specials, and go to recess. And she always goes at re 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 and, and recess duty and keep an eye on everybody. There's two grade levels out there, and you've got another teacher you're on duty with, and you're just trying to watch over things and, you know, knowing those students who probably shouldn't be playing together and keeping an eye and making sure they're doing okay with their other friends. and um, always having that walkie-talkie in your whistle and keeping everything under control. It's nice to get outside and walk around and talk with the kids and it's a great way to bond with some of your students that you don't always 
have the best classroom management relationship with. They need that extra attention in a positive way. So getting outside on recess duty, you know, I can start up a good conversation before there is a problem. And we have those, you know, two minutes of, what'd you do last night? And, you know, there's, there's not a reading lesson that's waiting to be taught. So I feel like I can still scan the area for kids and still talk with them at the same time and build that positive fund. Today we're just going to partner read and retell this story two times. One person does it and then the other person does it to make sure we've got all those important points. And then you need to do the last page in your packet on your own. Is reading important, being able to read? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How come? Um, because when you get older, you'll start reading harder words, so you got to start learning how to read hard words when you're little so you know them when you're bigger. Can you do it? Yes. Do you know your senses? Yes. Are you super smart? Yes. yes. Are you ready? Yes. Very nice. I think we're going to read with the person who we sit next to so that we can share a book today, okay? In first grade, is reading considered the number one job? Number one. Number one in first grade. It really is. As we know, reading um, enhances every other subject area, so that's very important. And we find if students are missing some of their the bricks in their foundation, it really affects their education down the road. Don't worry about it. You keep reading. Oh, do you have a question? I'm not sure words describe how important reading is. That's the cornerstone of everything that those kids are going to um, need to be successful in from now till the time they graduate, whether that be from high school or college, either one. There's really, in, in the big scheme of things, a very small window um, in the time that you can make the most progress in children's reading. And there's research out there that shows us that if, if you miss that, it becomes harder and harder and harder to get those kids reading at grade level. You each read the book, and then both of you retold all of the important parts of it? Really? I read little books, big books, long books, and I can read short books. And that's kind of a, a stressful thought when you have these little ones coming into your classroom who aren't reading, and you know that by the end of the year, they need to be reading pretty well. Are you a better reader this year than you were in kindergarten? Yeah, I'm more good at it. You know, the reading started out rather slow, and I was very apprehensive about it. I mean, he's gotten to the point where we have trouble getting to bed at night because he likes to sit there and read all the books that we've read him for years. Awesome. He just sits there with his light and reads, so we finally have to just take the books away and, and force him to sleep. Is that a good feeling? Oh, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. Now, feel is not one of our senses, but which sense goes along with feel? Which sense goes along with feel? Remember our spelling words from this week? Ben, which sense goes along with feel? Touch. Touch, you're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. I'm glad you guys were smart enough to connect those two. To see the look on her face when she talks about her experiences, and what compliments the kids gave her throughout the day when she comes home. The first time you hear that as a first year teacher, there's, there's nothing better than that. You know that's what you're supposed to be doing. Are they gonna feel the table? Are they gonna maybe feel the chair? Absolutely, that one's a little tricky, so I wanted to give you a heads up on it. You've made the decision to move from a nice little house in what seems like a really nice neighborhood to an apartment. Why, why would you do that? Um, Financially, daycare is expensive and we're renting this house right now and we tried looking for a house. You know, the ones that we loved, it just, you know, wasn't accommodating the new family lifestyle that we'll be having and um, we could do it, but we'd, you know, we'd be sacrificing this or that. We made the choice of moving into an apartment and I don't know financially I don't know we always said we'd like to have a house before we have a baby <laughs> because of this reason it's but it's um 
It's just going to take some creative planning. As two teachers, should they have to make the sacrifice based on teacher salaries? Boy, if it were up to me, absolutely not. Um, I think teach, teaching is one of the greatest professions and should be re rewarded financially more than it is. I know that to people working in schools, often it is a financial burden um, for them, and, it, and it's a tough one. Um, they both went into education knowing what the paycheck is going to be like and what sacrifices they've had to make. And there are people all over the country in education that make those sacrifices. So um, unfortunately, they do have to make it. Um, in my eyes, I wish they didn't have to. You have to kind of downsize when you have a child coming in. So you have to move back into an apartment for a little while. You have a baby coming. You have to buy all the stuff you're going to have for the child. I told him the other day, I said, I would rather live in a one bedroom, one bathroom apartment, you know, for the rest of our lives than to have him always working a second job. So he's more important to have at home than to live in a nice big house somewhere. I'm going to set the timer. We have seven minutes. Because she's a first time teacher, I think at the beginning she might have rushed things. I think she's grown to be possibly a little bit more patient. Ken and I work with our kids a lot. But Mrs. McNichol has made a definite impact in Stephen's reading ability, his math ability, just everything. Just overall, she's made a definite impact. You should be towards the end. I think Jennifer's instincts, too, are really good because she mentioned to us in one of our parent-teacher conferences that, you know, Audrey had not been scoring very well on a lot of her tests. So Jennifer, you know, was thinking about it a little bit and apparently had a, what you call it, a, a lunch, a special lunch with her mm -hmm. where they talked about some of the things and found out that, you know, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, Audrey actually was able to respond to a whole lot more than what she had been in the structured class. And I'm glad that we're going to the zoo. It helped her a lot at the beginning of the year. She was very organized. She had a room all set up perfectly. Still very organized, but she doesn't have those expectations that everything will run exactly like it should. You have a smile on your face, you had an awesome day, and you're wearing the color pink, you may line up. So rolling with punches is uh, kind of a learned trait, do you think? It is, and it's a learned trait, like we said, even for Jennifer, who wanted everything to just go perfectly. See you tomorrow. Yeah, when you're working with children, that's the way it works. Thank you, Madison, for remembering your job. I wouldn't say old season pro yet, but I would say I'm not the scatterbrained new teacher that I was in August. And October and November. <laughs> All right, this is how you're going to get into the zoo, so you need to put it on now, and I need to see everyone having it on before we get on the bus. Teachers pick their field trips according to their curriculum. So in first grade, they need to learn the animals and animals and their habitats. So a trip to the zoo fits perfectly. Do you stand on the bus? No. Do you scream on the bus? No. The day started off with the kids just running. We started off in Africa, just running this hard, and we're like, oh my gosh, constantly yelling, come back, come back, come back. One mile per minute, fastest land mammal in the world. Field trips are an important part, in my opinion, just because um, if teachers use that field trip for um, a learning experience, they'll talk about it ahead of time. Um, they'll talk about it afterwards. They can use it in math. They can use it in reading. They can use it in science. Do you remember your favorite animal at the zoo? Mm, that would be the elephant because it's the biggest walking mammal. I'm saying the land walking animal, not the biggest mammal ever, because a whale would be that. 
I had two troopers with me. You know, it was a hot day and it was it was long, but they stuck with it. I think that was like the first day I'd worn those shoes. I mean, they were athletic shoes, but they they were just slip-ons. I should have worn tennis shoes with socks. He was dead that night. Great. It was payback. How many, Nicholas? Um, six. Six. So Chase, prediction was right. And so were all those of you who put down six. If you were close, give yourself a pat on the back because it is hard to make predictions sometimes. But if you're close, you did a great job. We hit so many different things in first grade math. We do early fractions, computation, without carrying over, just, you know, adding and subtracting with two digits. A lot of graphs, money, they need to know their coins and how much it's worth. What time for number one? Um, 11.30. You are so close. You're right. It's 30 minutes. But remember, when it's in between two numbers, it always goes back to the smaller one. So not 11.30, but 10.30. They really do touch on just a little bit of everything, it seems like. Geometry, patterns, statistics, fractions, decimals. We set the foundation for a lot of things. Let's put it that way. Do you see it? Oh, good. All right, light bulb number two. Her lessons are much more meaty. They have a lot more to them. Um, I see a great improvement in, so in her lesson planning. I see improvement in her organization of her classroom. She's moved it a couple of times, things that weren't working for her. I see great improvement in her teaching of guided reading. She feels very comfortable. And if you look at her children's test scores, they're amazing. She's really spent a lot of time teaching them to read and they've really improved and it's really paid off. Wonderful. I'm seeing lots of sentences with capitals and periods and a whole complete thought. Awesome. For Kylie, I think she's come a long way in the guided reading. Good job. I think she struggled a little bit in the beginning and through the homework that Mrs. McNichol had sent home and the worksheets, um, I think she's come a long way. I think she's come a long way and I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. I see improvement in her management. She's more comfortable with her kids. She's set up those routines from day one and she's been very consistent with them. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. And then what happens when she gets to zero? They get quiet. We all have to look at her eyes. And can you talk then? Mm -mm. You have to be quiet? Why does she make you be quiet sometimes? Um. So we could um, hear what she was going to say. She's strict, but she's not mean. She keeps that good. And that class is, she's a well-oiled machine. They love, I mean, those kids love being in there. Can you see a visible difference between a teacher on her first day of school and her last day of the year? You can see a remarkable difference. Um, besides the nerves and jitters aren't there, just the things that the teachers established throughout the year, the procedures and the routines that she's established, and the smooth um, running of her classroom, the management that she has to organize her, her 20 kids in a matter of, you know, a second or two to get them lined up to go somewhere, where maybe back in September, that was a good you know, three-minute project to get them in line. It should take about three seconds to put that away. We've been doing this all year long. There you go, Madison, good girl. She has a lot of different personalities in that room, and she's really done a good job overall for a first-year teacher. Alex, thank you. We spoke in October when you told me that you were having a baby and you were motivated to work even harder through this year so that you'd kind of have your blueprint ready for next year. Mm -hmm. Uh, has that thought come into your mind at all that you will no longer have a blueprint? Oh, yes, yes. And um, the third grade teachers who I'll be working with next year have been really great and um, have actually met with me once <coughs> and have included me in lots of um, just FYI, this is what we're planning for next year kind of thing already. And so I know over the summer we'll talk a little bit more, but they're, they're, willing to help out as much as they can so that'll make it easy and easier and um, starting in August but I mean there's there's things that'll be different but 
in August, there's some things that are just the same in every grade that, that you do. So, but yes, that thought did cross my mind that I'm not going to be as prepared as I would have been if I'd stayed in first. You had four first grades this year. You're going to have four next year. So somebody is moving into the spot that she's going up to third grade. So can you kind of explain the decision to bump her to third grade? I think if you're a good administrator, I think if you do your job well, you look at people's particular strengths, and I think that you say, gosh, this is a deficit that I have in a particular grade level, or maybe even this would even add a greater strength to a particular grade level. And in this particular case, um, I see Jennifer as being a, a great asset to our third grade. Um, she, she did a very nice job this year as a first grade teacher. And I think that some of those experiences that she's had as a first grade teacher will make her even a better third grade teacher next year. Staying in first grade, um, she would be obviously a whole year more comfortable with her curriculum. Um, now she started from scratch going into third grade. However, she's learned a lot from first grade that she can apply to third grade. The pressures may be a bit less in third grade. Um, you do have kids coming to you that will actually know how to read um, in third grade. They actually know how to do school. You know, they've been in school now for at least three years um, so that the, some of those procedures and routines that you have to spend so much time teaching them to do in first grade, you don't have to spend nearly that time once you get to third grade. I don't think it, it means anything about the quality of work that Jennifer did this year. I know that Dr. DeMoss is pleased because she's um, indicated that to me. I think I've probably um, added a little stress to her life. It certainly would have mine when I said, hey Jennifer, I'd like for you to move to third grade. But um, in typical Jennifer fashion, throughout the course of the year, she said, okay, let's do it. That was a little um, scary because I had things sort of laid out. I've got a capital. I've got a period. Am I done? No. Why not? She can almost read my mind. <laughs> Sometimes it's, a, she, I'll start a sentence and she'll finish it and um, I don't know, we tease each other and play tricks on each other and I will miss her in a lot of ways. Um, there's just a camaraderie there that you don't find every day. I would have loved to stay in first grade but at the same time I'm very excited about third grade. So. It's your turn. You're all on your own again. What do you do, Eric? Audrey Pounds gets the award for always showing her excitement for learning. Oh, Audrey, if everyone was as excited as you, I tell you, we'd have a fun, fun class. I would just say, you know, the people you really need to ask about Jennifer are her students. And I think if you go in and see her classroom, you will realize they have had a wonderful year. They've enjoyed it. They've learned so many new things, and they will truly miss her. They have come to love her. And Kylie, this is for you for showing much passion for writing. Do you know what passion means? It means that you really, really love doing it, so you're going to put all your hard effort into it, and you did a great job because you wrote lots of different things this year. I think she's the bestest teacher I ever had. So we can play at recess, just like Mother said. And guess what else? I can't wait to see those guys again because we will be friends forever and forever. What was your favorite thing about this class? Um, that I made new friends and um, and uh, we had Mr. Manickel for a teacher. They decided to bring in their favorite books so you can read them to your baby. Oh yep. my goodness. Oh my goodness. Thank you guys so much. Congratulations. Strong. Thanks for a wonderful oh. year and teaching our little ones such a wonderful thing. Thank you very much. We wanted to make you this scrapbook so you can remember your first year as a first grade teacher. Oh. And we think you're very special. You guys, thank you so much this year. This was a very special year for me because just like it was your first year of school, like all day, it was my first year of teaching with my own class. So thank you so much for this. Nothing should be inside your desk because it'll have to go in the trash after today. So make sure it's all empty. Thank you. Jake's ready to line up. Okay. Bobby's ready. Tyler's ready. 
quick, sweetheart. Okay. Wonderful summer, first graders. Go swimming. Go play outside. Read. What are you going to do this summer? Read. Read. Oh, that was weak. What are you going to do this summer? Read. Thank you. All right, Jake, follow him on out. High fives. Last high fives of the school year. Oh, uh, I got it. All right, Miss Nick Nichols class, eyes forward. We're going to walk out this way and follow the sixth graders. Go I'm going to miss you, miss you. I'm going to miss you, too. I'll see you guys next year, though. You'll have to come see me. Come up to third grade. Bye. Bye, sweetheart. Have a wonderful summer, Miss Anna. Let's go down to the crosswalk and meet her because we can't cross the street over here. You made this the best year ever, and I am going to miss you so much. Bye, guys. It went very fast. It went very fast, but that. I mean, that's good because that means that means we were busy and we were doing lots of stuff, but. I just, I can't believe it's over. I'm exhausted. <laughs> just mentally and physically exhausted. I just, I want to get this done and I like to be able to plan ahead, but I really wanted to stay focused on my first graders and I didn't want to take any, any of my attention away from them up until the last minute of the last day. So, um, and even today, I don't, I can't start thinking about third grade yet. Tomorrow will be a big third grade day. probably been a difficult year but um, but she's done a nice job she'll be a good teacher she's she let me let me rephrase that Jennifer is a good teacher and in the years to come I know she's gonna be a great teacher when I look back I can see their reading levels as they progress over the year and you can see how well they did on their end-of-year assessments and things but when I think about this year I think about the personal connections that I made with them and that was really important to me been a cram-packed year for her. I mean, she is having, you know, all of life's biggest events occurring just one right after the other. You spend all this time as a little girl thinking about, you know, being married, and she has that, and all this time thinking about having your babies and your children, and she's going to do that. You know, and she's moved, and I, I mean, not only has she had these wonderful life events that are happening, but those same life events are also some of the most stressful things that people ever go through. And they're all things that are coming on top of the huge responsibility of making sure that 23 first graders walk out the door knowing how to read and ready to go to second grade. <laughs> it's a lot. The teachers that tend to leave the profession because they're frustrated or um, just isn't what they thought it was going to be tend to be some of the best and the brightest. Is she the kind of teacher that we really need to watch out for? I think absolutely, absolutely. And somebody like that, you want to have out front. You want to have other teachers see her doing teaching the way we want teaching to be done. What letter grade did Jennifer earn this year? Oh, Jennifer received an A. She absolutely would get an A. There's no doubt in my mind that that's what, what I would give her. Oh, A plus. <laughs> Jennifer has done an outstanding job. What letter grade did Jennifer earn? That's an easy one. She would earn an A. Hey, Jennifer earned an A teaching this year, no questions asked. I'd say a B. I think like I did better than average, but there's lots of things I could have done differently and some things I wish I would have. But a B. I tried. I tried real hard. <laughs> First graders are, they're just something else. And um, it was a good time.
Bennett was born July 16th. We all did great, so he's doing wonderful. And his name is Bennett Richard McNichol. How are you finding being a mother? I like it a lot. I like it a lot. We're having a lot of fun. So, and I'm I'm blessed. He's an he's an easy baby. Every baby is good, but he's he's easy. So, it makes it a lot of fun. <laughs> and so I've been in third grade this year, and it's been wonderful. It's been busy, but it wasn't as dramatic a change as the first year in general. No matter what grade you teach, that's always a little bit more um, interesting of a year. And so this wasn't as stressful or as interesting, if you want to say, as the first year was. But it was good. It was a good year. I'm going to take a leave of absence for about two years and uh, stay home with Bennett and decide then if I want to return at the two-year mark or if I want to stay home a little longer. And uh, so I, I put in for my leave of absence, which was hard to do um, because I, I did love teaching and I loved what I was doing. But, you know, your family is only, you only have young kids once. I've decided to um, take on a few extra kids at a stay-at-home daycare. Um, no babies, just toddlers. And that'll help Bennett. He'll have playmates. And then we'll also, you know, you have the extra financial income coming in as well. What is the bottom line compared to staying teaching or doing home daycare? We'll be coming out ahead. We'll be coming out ahead.